Hey, good morning. Um, I have a feeling this will be the last video that I make. Um, of course, if I get any dreams or visions or anything, I'll put those up, but <clears throat> I don't expect to. Somebody asked me to spend a little more time talking about aliens. Um, so I want to do that for you. I spent about on and off probably 10 years studying aliens and abduction stories and that sort of thing. Um, so I think I have a fair amount of insight into the subject. In, uh, in Genesis 6, there's a story about angels that see the human women and lust after them and they give up their heavenly dwellings and they come to earth and they <clears throat> take them as their wives and they have children with them and those children are called the Nephilim. They're um, the giants and the little G gods of old. And most of your polytheist religions, I believe, worship these Nephilim as their gods or possibly the fallen angels. The book of Enoch talks about this in more detail and it talks about how these fallen angels brought the seven sacred sciences and they taught men um, things of, of heaven, which were not meant for here. And, you know, when you really break down those seven sacred sciences, they're a lot of the basis of what we have for technology now. So I assume that before the flood, there was similar to similar technology to what we see today as King Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun um, but the the thing that strikes me about that about the creation of the Nephilim and the corruption of all flesh on the earth is what it really came down to was a DNA modification it was changing the original creation that God had made. And, um, you know, in every abduction story that I've read, and I've read many, um, when people are taken, they claim to, if they're a female, to have their eggs taken from them. Or if they're male, they claim to have sperm taken from them. And a lot of women in these abduction stories are taken to these birthing rooms where they see tubes of hybrids, some kind of cross between aliens and humans. Um, it seems to me that the same things that the fallen angels were doing during that time before Noah they're doing in these abduction cases maybe in a different way but it's the same type of thing it's the crossing of human DNA with their DNA I have a feeling that what people call the greys are Vessels; Those are um, created bodies for demons to, uh, to dwell in. And I think what people call the tall whites are the, the original fallen angels. You know, the defense minister of Canada came out, I want to say a year or two ago, maybe three and said that the United States takes their orders from the tall whites. A four-star general recently in giving a speech to the cadets at West Point stated that they will face hybrid armies and little green men. You cannot understand how this whole con the construct of this world is organized and how, it, how a single plan has been moving toward a goal 
over the course of thousands of years unless you understand that the control mechanism behind the construct of the world is not human. And the point that it's moving toward is, I believe, a total corruption of the flesh of men. As Jesus said, in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, it will be like the days of Noah. In the days of Noah, all flesh was corrupted. DNA was modified. I believe that the mark of the beast will be probably a a DNA modification of humanity. I think the Vatican is getting ready to announce the existence of aliens and I believe that it will be the great deception. You've been conditioned from the time of your birth to believe in the existence of these things. But the thing is, if you're Satan and you need to bring a new species onto the earth, you, you want to bring out your fallen angel forces and you want them to be accepted by humanity. You need to create a backstory and you need it to be widely accepted. The only way you can do that is through propaganda. So you need to put it in movies and TV. People have now in surveys have come to believe more in aliens than in God. There's more people who believe in the existence of aliens than believe in God according to a recent survey in Britain. <clears throat> so it's moving quickly toward this final deception. So what if the Vatican brings out these things and they say, you know, and it's in the middle of a great war, a nuclear war or something, and they say these, these things have been watching over us and they see that we're about to destroy each other and they've come to bring us peace. And they've come to bring us the truth. And they teach a new gospel. I mean, the Vatican has been writing the existence of aliens into church doctrine over the past few years. They own the world's largest infrared telescope on top of Mount Graham. The thing about infrared is that, you know, things that are interdimensional, that don't only exist in our dimension, but can move into other dimensions. The reason they can do that, what dimensions are, is a difference in frequency. We, are, we can measure frequency primarily through vibration and through light spectrum. There's other pieces to frequency that we don't understand, but those are the two primary components that we measure. And so if you're going to look at things that are in another dimension, then you need to be able to see in another light spectrum. The infrared telescope is capable through infrared of seeing into another light spectrum. So-called ghost hunters use infrared to try to see entities. The head of the person that's in charge of the observatory, who is a Jesuit, and I forget his name, has written, I think, 10 books last time I checked on aliens. And he's in charge of this Lucifer telescope. The Pope came out and, and on record said that he would baptize our Martian brothers. I believe a great deception is getting ready to take place. I believe a new religion will be implemented <clears throat> around these things and a one world government. And I believe that people will be told that they can become like gods. I believe that the original temptation of Satan and the original lie from the Garden of Eden will take place again. 
And you'll be told that you can become like gods and all you need to do is to change your genetics, is to modify your DNA, to take a chip or a mark that modifies your DNA and mixes you with these entities. And perhaps that is why in Revelation it says that those who take the mark of the beast cannot be saved. Maybe it's because they're no longer human. Maybe it's because they've given up their free will and their humanity. Because when Jesus came, he came as a human and he died as a human to take away the sins of humanity. He didn't come as a Nephilim and die as a Nephilim to take away the sins of, of, of the Nephilim or of the fallen angels or of anything else. So, if you start to hear of these aliens, if you start to hear that they're the saviors of humanity, if you start to hear that you can become like gods and that you're meant to live forever and take the next evolutionary step, understand that it's a lie from the pit of hell. Understand that it was the lie in the Garden of Eden. Understand that these fallen angels have had an agenda for thousands of years and they've only been held back by the, the restrainer. But when that restrainer is removed, they will not be held back any longer. They put all of the things in place, all of the things in motion that have to be put in place for this final deception. They've taught humanity how to splice and change genetics. They've given humanity the technology that they would need to create RFID chips to link all monetary systems around the world so that no man could buy or sell unless they take the mark. They've given man the technology to open up portals to allow more of these entities in to our dimension. These things are taking place at a rapid pace. And the great deception that was talked about by Paul will come. And there will be a great falling away. I hope and pray that you're not deceived. Jesus Christ was the Savior. He was God. He was the Word manifest in flesh. He died for your sins. He came to save you. And He is your only hope. The rest of this world will turn to chaos. Everything else will be a deception. The only truth that you can hang your eternity on is Jesus Christ. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life.